Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for attending our special online class. Uh, my name is Akira, and this is Megumi. And it's getting seriously hot in Japan now. Like, you know, well, as we get into like the month of July, and it's really, really hot. And, well, we're talking about uh, ramen shops in the summer. And uh, because, you know, ramen shops, you know, that's what well, we associate ramen shops with, like, you know, something hot, right? Hot food. And, you know, like, we naturally don't want to eat, like, something hot, like, when it's hot, right? So, um, naturally, like, ramen shops, like, lose a lot of sales uh, during summer. So, but, you know, like we don't want to, like you know, we want them to like keep like well uh, making as much sales as like you know, they usually do like during the uh, regular month, right? So um, that's what we're talking about today, and uh, we're talking about some well um, menu items that like you know they should uh, serve like during the summer, like hot days, um, to well stay attractive to the customer. So uh, let's start talking about it, and um, so we're gonna. I'm just gonna do like talk talk about like a little bit about that in the lecture, and then um, to make me is gonna make um, well ramen noodles, you know, really good for um, cold noodles, and uh, I'm gonna show you a sample uh, cold dish uh, later in the kitchen. Uh, our instructor is gonna show us the um, you know example of it. So. Let's say uh, like the ramen shops, right? Like they struggle, you know, like in the summer because while well, summer is hot, especially in Japan, right? It's very, very hot. Like um, especially like the past like uh, summer days, like you know, it's um, it's really hot, uh, scorching hot. So summer is hot, but like in you know, ramen is hot as well. So you know, a lot of people uh, you know tend to stay, like stay away from ramen shops, like you know, when it's hot. And so, well, they lose a lot of sales. Like they can't make you know, as much sales as they do. Like usually, especially like in the winter time, like when it's cold, you know, people tend to want uh, to have like something warm during the winter, like when it's cold, right? Um, so a lot of ramen shops, right? Um, you know, all these ramen shops that like uh, thrive and survive like in a very, very competitive market, you know, especially like in Tokyo, right? So they uh, develop and serve uh, seasonal ramen for the summer, right, in the hot days. And so what do we want, right? Like when it's hot outside, okay, so we want something cold, uh, cool, right? And we want something spicy and we want something sour. So these are the sort of patterns of, um, you know, ramen dishes that we see like during the summertime. You know, when it's hot, like, and people don't want to eat, um, want to have, like, something hot. So, you know, they go for um, something cold, something spicy, something sour. And why do we go, like, cold, something cold is, like, kind of, well, straightforward, but, like, why do we go for, like, something spicy, right? Well, when we eat, like, something spicy, you know, they, we um, sweat, right? We sweat, like, when we sweat, then, you know, our temperature uh, drops, right? It's like, our, like, spiciness having something spicy you know like there's a sweat and that like takes like some heat off our body right so that's that maybe like you know some people um eat something spicy something hot um when it's hot right uh, to sweat and something sour so like we have um uh some sour like in japan like you know well lemon uh lime um a lot of like different types of citrus right citrus like sudachi like yuzu um, you like we have like ume, right? Like sour plum, right? And you know, people want like something sour, um, uh, to sort of like, um, yeah, actually, well, eating something sour, like, you know, well, gives us like some health benefits as well. Like, um, for example, like, you know, like, well, it helps with digestion and, uh, it helps with, uh, like, well, prevention, well, disease prevention as well. Um, so we tend to eat like some, something sour, like, you know, when it's hot as well so like there are three patterns of like what we can offer right and um, during the summer days and most popular ramen dishes like um that are offered uh ramen shop are you know all, like these are the kind of ranking that i found like you know well actually online but, like um so she has sugar right she has sugar is like something like it's it's ramen like it's part of ramen like or you know it's something different but like it's a uh, ramen noodles right but um, it's uh, it's cold, right? And then like it has like all these toppings that are like typically um, kind of thinly sliced, like cucumbers and you know gr um, grilled eggs 
and like well thinly sliced ham and like all these things like on top and then like you know you eat it with um kind of sour uh sauce right over it and so it's a combination of like cold and sour and tsukemen right tsukemen dipping noodles and dipping noodles like it's typically cold right it's soft cold and uh, it can be like sour and like combination of sour and cold, or a combination of like spicy and cold. And cold ramen, cold ramen is something totally different from here's sugar in that, well, it's that it's just soup noodle, right? Soup noodle, but like you know, soup itself is like really cold, um, typically light taste. Um, it could be like, you know, well, seafood based, like uh, chicken based, uh, very light soup, right? But like, um, it, then it's served like with uh, some uh, something sour, like for example, like you know, thinly sliced lemon, lime, um, things like that. It's, it's very good and spicy ramen, right? Spicy ramen, like you know, people tend to like eat spicy food, like spicy um, dish, and um, that's what we are doing actually next week. So for those of you guys who are interested in like spicy ramen, serving spicy ramen like during the summer, um, please stay tuned for the next class next week. And uh, so the noodles for cold ramen, right? And well, this is um, it's kind of kind of small, but like uh, this is a chart like, you know, we've been using like over and over to sort of like describe different noodle texture. And, um, you know, the high, well, higher the protein content of the flour we use, right? Uh, the harder the noodle texture. And so this, this acts as like hydration, like higher the hydration, like softer the noodle texture and the noodle size is thinner, uh, thicker. And I, I say like, uh, so the cold noodle, right? Cold ramen, noodles for cold ramen is like somewhere between here, like, well, basically high in hydration, high in hydration based noodle, like, so it's soft, but at the same time, like it's um, chewy. And, you know, I notice that like the noodle size shouldn't be like too thin. Because like uh, it's because it's soft, right? So like you know it wouldn't give you um, you know good bite to it. So we usually um, as well that probably the thinness, right? Thinness would be like 1.5 millimeter, something like the medium size uh, noodle, and it could be like you know very thick or flat. So um, okay, so speaking of noodles, right? Like let's start making um, noodles for uh, cold ramen and maybe it's gonna make that um the ramen noodles for cold ramen and so we have over here uh our noodle machine and it's richmond gold richmond gold machine and uh it's uh only one machine that can do you know everything right? like from scratch to make fresh noodles, fresh ramen noodles from scratch, right? And so today's ingredients, right? Today's ingredients, uh, the wheat flour, right? It's actually a mix of uh, ramen flour and udon flour. Udon flour has like lower protein content, you know, softer noodles. And, you know, we mix it like at a certain blending ratio and with the um, whole egg powder. And blending, um, you know, flowers with like varying like protein content, like kind of gives you like kind of kind of unique noodle texture. And it's something like we uh, talked about in our uh, online course as well. But like, so first we put it in there, right? The all the solid ingredients, and then start mixing it for one minute. And while you know we do that, right? Like the machine is doing it, like. It means, um, well, dissolving all the kansi and salt into the water, kansi and salt in the water. And yeah, we, we want to make sure that like all the kansi and salt are dissolved into the water before we add it to the flour in the mixing. Okay, so let's go. Um, so this mixer is 10 kilo mixer, and that that's like that means like you know you can mix up to like 10 kilograms of solid ingredients at a time. 
and uh, the minimum, minimum batch is like just four, right? Four kilograms. So that's what we are doing. And as you can see that like you control um, most aspects of like, you know, operation with a touch in the panel, just touch panel. And for this particular dough, right, it takes like uh, 10 minutes in total to, uh, to be done, right? So, um, but you know, we can't really wait for 10 minutes, right? And so make me made the uh, dough in advance. This is the exact same recipe. So this is this is considered like um, kind of higher end of like kind of medium rate hydration ratio noodle. The hydration ratio is like 38 percent. So the you can notice that like um, the color of the dough um, being yellow from the well uh, holy powder and can see and um, because the size of the new, uh, dough, right? 38%. Uh, so it's it's a bit um, big. How much we don't flour in it? Like, you know, we have a question. Thank you very much. Uh, we put uh, about like 35% in total, 5%, 35% in total. So, like, um, the ramen flour we put like is um, 60 three percent or so and then like there's two percent um being like in the whole egg powder so this machine um actually like as you can see like you know it's it's feeding the dough into the roller right like automatically so you don't have to you know do it yourself like you know by hand and sometimes like it takes um kind of getting used to do like you know how much like dough you need to like you know well feed it feed into the roll, uh, roller the time and then sometimes like you well add too much and make some problem and then look notice that like make me so like you know put the for her hand in there and then um because the there's a sensor kind of running right um well you can't see the sensor but like you know sensor laser but like uh there's a laser like kind of running right um you know uh, before you know when so when you put the hand in there um, it beeps and like um, it stops separation because it's dangerous if you just like put your hand in there like you know get get fed into the roller so so it's automatic and you know then like it's automatically like winding it into the rolling thing And this process, like we call um, rough foaming, rough foaming, which means that like we just we make like rough sheet of dough, right? rough sheet of dough. And but uh, the problem is that like the this dough is like still fragile, right? It's like still fragile, weak. So you want to make it firm. You want to make it stronger. And so we want to. What we do is that like we are going to separate it into two sheets, right? Two separate sheets and you know combine them combine them through the roller so that's what she's doing now and you know separating right and um compounding them through the roller So the dough is coming now, and well, once you well, just get it on, right? Like it just you know just keeps winding it um, by itself, automatic. So this process, combined process, um, kind of kind of working the dough, um, yeah, to well, like develop a gluten and. You know, making the dough stronger, firmer. So this is how we do it, like kind of work the dough and you know, develop the gluten structure.
So that that's a that's a good question. That, like someone asked, like you know, well, how much the that was a like uh, the ratio of like udon flour that we put in there, right? Um, so you know, udon flour is just, well like has lower protein content of, than uh, um, brahmin flour, right? So um, the you know more brahmin flour you put in there, uh, you know the harder the noodle texture, and then like the more udon flour you put in there, like you no know, the well softer noodle texture, but um, another thing, you know, I want to talk about is that, like, well, it's a, it's a viscosity value, and like, that's that's how, you know, well, the dough get like, you know, elastic, right? And then so the more viscosity, the more elastic the noodle will become, right? And then um, udon flour, has, well, tends tends to have like higher viscosity value than uh, brahmin flour. So even though like we put um, more, I mean, less udon flour. Uh, more ramen flour, right? And it, like the noodle, the dough is going to be like you know less elastic, right? And but like if you put like more noodle flour, then um, you know the noodle will be like more elastic. So like kind of it's kind of like a trade-off, and you know you could uh, try like you know different um, ratio, like blending ratio, to find out like your you know the right ratio for your noodles. And so this is the second round of combining process. Like we do it, this process um, usually twice to make sure that well the dough is like fully developed, right? Um, in terms of gluten structure, and yeah, so that like you know it's it's great um, noodle texture. And from this point on, like we start, we start um, dusting dough, right? Dusting the dough. Yeah, I remember the hydration ratio is like 38%, which is um, which is pretty wet for um, uh, ramen noodles. And so, yeah, we should dust like to you know keep it from sticking, right? So yeah, we're done. So like walking the dough after this point, and you know all we have to do is just thin it, thin the dough. It's the final thickness, and then you know we can start um, cutting it. We can start cutting noodle, cutting the dough sheet into noodles. And the good thing is that, like, you know, we can actually speed up from this point on. And, well, up to combined process, like, we are kind of kind of going slow on purpose because um, we wanted to, like, you know, walk the dough, like, you know, the good pressure of the rollers. But from this point on, we can just go, like, kind of faster, you know, just sheeting it. And... All this while, like we are dusting the dough um, to make sure that it's not going to stick. And we we're going to sheet this dough like in a couple times after the like combined process because you know, we want to well uh, thin this dough like kind of gradually. If we thin the dough like you know, all at once, right? And then that, that would damage the gluten structure of the dough. So that's it's really good. Like, you know, we, we, we work so hard to well develop the gluten structure inside the dough up to this point, but like you know, well thinning it drastically, like you know, the destroys all the, the gluten we developed so far. So we wanna thin it gradually, a little by little. So we are almost there. Almost there. Uh, 
Okay, so so what she's doing now, right? What she's doing now is that like she's uh, measuring the actual thickness, right? Actual thickness dough. Um, it's two point two, yeah, two point zero, like two point zero, almost like even. Um, so because you know after you you know the dough go through the the roller clearance, right? Uh, even though like we set the roller clearance to 1.5, like it was 2.0 millimeter, because like dough, actual dough, like dough thickness, right? This always, always expands, right? After it's going through the roller gap. So uh, we need to make sure like what the actual thickness is and then like how much it expands, right? To um, figure out like what roller gap like we need to set to get, well, you know, get the final thickness right. And notice this, um, the cutter we use. This is, this is a cutter like we call a slitter cutter. And uh, so this cutter determines like each group of this cutter like determines the, the width, right? Width of the noodle. So this is number number 20 cutter, square number 20 cutter. And like each group is like 1.5 millimeter in width. And the thickness, right, we are controlling by the roller gap. So, so for this bigger type of noodle, right, uh, noodle size, um, the you know 1.5 millimeter like width, and then thickness we like we are aiming at like 1.3 millimeter. So we are going to cut it and yeah, I noticed that like she's dusting the dough sheet, you know, right before um, gets cut into noodles, right? And so this machine um, portions noodles, right, automatically. Um, then, well, you can, you can definitely um, well, change the portion size, you know, serving size, you know, it's by weight. And uh, well, what you can change is that like, you know, length, length of noodle, and it just touch of a knob, right? Uh, you can make it longer, you can make it like shorter to have like, you know, bigger serving size or like a small serving size. It's very easy. And notice like how, like, you know, how, she sits there and then, you know, like catch noodles. And, you know, it's like, it's very sort of like, cause that where she catch noodles, like, well, relatively high, uh, right? Like from the ground. So like, you know, she, she can like just, well, um, sort of relax on like sitting in chair and then, um, you know, just catch noodles. And so that like, if it's like on the low position, like she has to catch, like, and then, you know, for, Imagine like you have you'd have to do it like for like you know ten minutes like you know thirty minutes straight, you know you probably hurt your back and you know need to stretch it a little bit to do the, another batch. So it's another sort of a feature in this machine that like makes you know every day like you know making a little bit easier. Okay, so that was that. And um, so this type of noodle is very good for, um, you know, cold ramen and uh, you know, hiyashi chuga we talked about. And, you know, it's like soft, but like same time, like um, it's so like kind of chewy, kind of firm, because, you know, it has like uh, ramen flour, like 60%, 65%, and little flour, like 35%. So let's go to our kitchen and, yeah, uh, so this is our kitchen and where, you know, we teach our like in-person school, in-person learning school. And uh, yeah, so like we have, like, we would like to have like Mr. Sano, uh, our instructor, um, gonna show us a, uh, the cold ramen, cold ramen today. So thank you, Mr. Sano, and. 
今日はですね、ちょっと夏で暑いので、もう冷やしラーメンという冷たいラーメンを作ります。So it's a hot summer day, so like we decided to do a cold ramen today. Yeah, so right, ramen soup like consists of like in you know, a base soup, right, the stock and t a r e and、uh, flavored oil. It's three things. Yeah, okay, so like this is a like sort of like recipe of the, the this particular soup, like you know, we, we show you, and then by like, well, everything in it, like you know, toppings and noodles and everything like soup, and then you know, that's how you know it looks, like, how it looks like in the picture. Okay, so uh, we're gonna use like for the base stock, right? You're gonna use like whole chicken. Uh, the light stock and then, like, kind of clear stock. And then, two, so, like, add, like, you know, a bit of, like, umami, right? Like, we're going to add, like, a kelp dashi as well. So, for the Montodare, like,、uh, so Montodare is basically like, you know, kind of seasoning、uh, for this,、um, the soup, right? And then, so we're going to have like, well,、uh, a bit of like soy sauce, type like this kind of salt、um, base, like tare. And then, you know, we're going to have like a bit of vinegar as well, like to kind of make it、um, kind of, well, like clean, I mean, like, you know, kind of, well, fresh, kind of refreshing to eat. Okay. Okay, so, like, because、uh, this is a cold ramen noodle, like, and then so, you know, we don't want to use like a lot of like different types of like flavored oils. Oils, like, you know, oils, like, make, you know, don't want to make it like too greasy. So, like, I'm just going to use、uh, the one simple、um, the chili oil. Okay, so、uh, I'm gonna make the, this ball by like, what, we're gonna, what I'm gonna do right now is like,、uh, well, first is that, like, I'm gonna prepare the、uh, toppings first. Okay, so I'm just gonna do the meat first, the grill them, and、um, 100 grams. Okay, so this is the tablet like sauce that we use to、um, make the、uh, chashu,、um, the you know, the pork, the chunk of pork meat, like,、um, you, you know, we marinate it like in this、um, sauce. And、uh, so we are kind of like, well,、um, you know, we, we use in this、uh, particular sauce like we use to、um, the cook the chashu. And as you can see, like, you know, we, you know, there are some garlic in there, like, there are some, like, ginger in there, and then, like, there's some chili in there, too. And this is the sort of like Chinese, like,、um, kind of spice that, like, that you can find, like, in a local market.、Um, it's a, I don't know, exact、uh, word for it in English, but, like, Um, it's, it's a kind of spicy,、um, yeah, spicy like you know, seasoning uh, that, uh, that's made of like kind of, well, kind of beans. And just gonna start like grilling the、um, meat. And the sauce、um, for this meat, right? I'm just gonna use like 25 grams of it. So, like, two grams, right? And then、uh, the five grams. And make sure that the meats are like 
you know, brown before you add the sauce, right? And stir the sauce well before you add it to the meat. So that's done, and just gonna move on to. So the tare, right? Tare, the motodare. Um, gonna blend, start the blending. Right, so uh, the blending ratio, like an amount of like tari, each tari, like we use is like you know as as written, right? But like um, uh, our ramen school and our uh, e-learning course, like in you know, the online course, uh, we use and we make and we actually show how how to make them, like you know each of them, like actually that many uh, tare, you know, how to make them, right? Each of them actually. <laughs> So, like, notice that, like, you know, we have like different color labels, and um, blue one, my red one, like yellow and green. So, for example, like this particular thing, like, you know, blue label, uh, this is the soy sauce uh, with uh, clam, sea clam. It's like kind of mixed, right? So this red label, um, particularly this one, right? Like it's actually like just clam, like sea clam, uh, you know, cooked in the, this soy sauce, like, you know, kind of, well, heated, right? And the yellow label, like this one, is like actually like you know salt and water and sea clam, uh, so like cooked in there. So the green label, like, is just others, and like for example, like you know uh, the fish sauce, uh, like sweet chili sauce, and different curry. So. So yeah, this is another one that's like, you know, so, salt tare, like shoyu tare um, that we use to like that chashu in. Um, you know, we use it as like tare as well, motodare as well. Right, so like, you know, whenever we like, we are making like, well, uh, ramen soup, uh, you know, we blend the, uh, this, all these like, um, tare on different ratios, and then like with uh, this stock to make the uh, ramen soup. Okay, just kind of blend, sub blending. Uh, as written in there, like so, the blended vinegar, that's two grams. And once we once I measure it, like now I transfer it to uh, another cup, right? And fish sauce is one gram. Right. 
and uh, it's dark soy sauce. Um, uh, it's it's a tare that like it's fresh soy sauce, dark soy sauce, and then like you know three things kind of blended together, and just one gram. And then uh, it's one again like you know three things blended together, right? Uh, like shrimp, like clam, and uh, a scallop or something. And um, yeah, these three things like kind of cooked together like in the salt water. And this is the kombu like kelp uh, salt sauce. And it's eight eight grams, so like it's a uh, it's a lot of lot of it. And this one is um, niboshi, like it's basically like dried sardine, um, yeah, the salt. So like you know, cooked in the salt water. And it's it's mirroring, mirroring by like um, you know, uh, the mirroring contains the alcohol, so uh, it's uh, mirroring that. Well, uh, we we heat it and like. To evaporate all the alcohol. And the sun dried salt, just, just uh, fresh at like 0.4 grams. So these are the all like the things that, like, you know, that going to like tare into dare. So I'm going to start cooking the noodles. Yeah, I'm just going to use the noodles that, like, you know, we just made, freshly made. Okay, so I'm going to cook them for uh, one minute and 50 seconds. Yeah, because this is the kind of cold, cold ramen, like cold ramen, right? Uh, so you know what we do is that like we cook them, cook the noodles, right? And then after that, like we chill them, like we chill them with the uh, ice water, I mean ice water. So the the noodle texture would get tighter, right, which means that they get harder. And yeah, so the you know the bowl, right? And the bowl, um, the glass bowl. I'm going to use this glass bowl, and then like, um, well, uh, I asked them to uh, the chill and chill it in the refrigerator with this. So the base stock, when I and I also let it actually chill it. And I'm just gonna dump the tare right in there. Okay, so uh, for this dish, right, like I'm gonna cook the noodles and like and chill it, wash and chill it. Chill them and then uh, put the noodles in the bowl and then uh, pour the soup in the bowl. Yeah, so I'm gonna wash them, right? Wash the noodles, wash the noodles. Yeah, okay, so after we wash them, right? So wash them to actually remove the starch, right, of the noodles, and then um, I'm gonna chill them.
Okay, and I am going to place them into the roll. <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to pour the soup in there. Okay, I'm going to top it. Right, so I'm gonna place the meat, uh, you know, I'm gonna place meat, and I, I kind of, well, um, kind of warm them. Just place all the meat. And those are Japanese cucumbers. I kind of cut into kind of thinly cut, right? And you know, some some people like love kimchi like with that um, beef, right? Um, so I'll do that. And this is actually a leak, right? Just white pot will leak, and then uh, you know, the we have a technique of like you know cutting the white pot leak like in that way, like so like making them look like um, the white mustache or something, and then uh, the lemon, so that you know that's a sourness, uh, uh, you know we talked about right. Okay, so lastly, like I put uh, the chili oil to well, add some a bit of a spiciness. Okay, so that's so so that's a cold cold ramen. Uh, you know, I, just one example of cold ramen, and it's it's very cold and. Well, uh, the you know the meat and you know that that's good like you know kind of like uh, promotes your uh, appetite right and then the kimchi spiciness cold spiciness sourness from the tomato I mean the lemon you know everything in there we talked about. Yeah, so in our, like, you know, a real ramen school, right, like, you know, we, so we make it, right, we make it first and then, like, you know, try it and then, like, see, oh, okay, so, you know, we, we need, like, more, like, in a sodium, more, like, saltiness, right, and then, like, we add, like, a little bit of that, and so, like, kind of do a lot of adjustments, like, of the tare and, like, you know, flavored oil, uh, the soup, the base stock. Um, so to well reach the final uh, recipe, and so that's how we develop our recipes, and then uh, you know that we sh actually share on the like online course, and uh, yeah, so like yeah, speaking of online course, like you know we have like online course available, uh, you know all the sessions are available, it's like everything we teach, like we taught in our ramen school, real ramen school is available uh, online, so like that's. Online school uh, dot yamato noodle uh, dot com. Yeah, so that's it. Like, so thank you very much for your uh, watching the class, and then yeah, we'll see you guys in the next class. So until then, like, yeah, stay healthy, you know, stay safe. So thank you very much. Bye bye.